Welcome back to the next episode in the Wix SEO series. In this episode, we'll be taking a closer look at how we can optimize the website performance of our Wix website in order to improve our organic rankings. And the reason why this is important is because Google actually takes into account your website performance when they rank your website in the Google search. So it's super important that you actually have a well-performing website in order to rank well and perform well in the organic results. So we'll start off by looking at some tools where you can actually analyze your website performance of your Wix website by then we'll then go into how we can optimize certain elements on the Wix website itself and then by the end of this video you should have an idea on how you can actually optimize your website to increase your performance and hopefully improve your organic rankings as well. But with that being said let's just jump into today's tutorial and hopefully you guys do enjoy. Okay so the first thing we want to do is just make sure we head over to our Wix website so if you watch the Wix SEO tutorial that we've done uh, we are building this who is Bob and coffee shop which we have used as an example throughout the tutorial. Now this Wix website it doesn't have a premium plan because it is an example video or an example website itself so we do still have ads on the website itself and we do have a free domain name. Now with that being said, if we want to start optimizing our website from an SEO perspective, we want to make sure we head over to the VIX editor itself. Once you're in the VIX editor, we're going to start looking at some things which are going to be images and editing images or having images on your website will actually reduce the speed of your website quite a lot. Now the type of image that you have on your website will obviously have a bigger impact on your website and other types of images will have less of an impact of your website performance. Some images will have a huge impact on your website performance, negative impact on your website performance, I should say, is big images. So as you can see here at the top of our website at the moment, we do have a slideshow gallery with, um, I think, two or three different images. I think it is uh, three different images uh, that we have here at the top of our website. Now, these images are very, very big on the website itself. And that also means that the dimensions of these images are also big as well. Now, when you have images with big dimensions, that means that the image itself will actually be quite big. So the file size of that image will be big. Now, if you have an image which are lower in terms of dimensions, let's say 10 pixels by 10 pixels, that is going to be a small, it's just going to have a smaller file size overall. So what we want to do here is make sure that we're using as few big images or large images on our website as possible. Now we can try to compress these images and we can make sure that we're using a preferred file type on these images as well. So JPEGs are gonna be preferred in these types of examples. Also WebP is gonna be a good file size to use, although I'm not 100% sure if it is supported by Wix yet or not. Now, once you have these images on the page itself, we can see that we have these big images on the website, but what we want to do is just make sure that we're using the right image dimensions. So if this image is this big on the website itself, it should be that big as well when you upload it to Wix. Now, if you have a smaller image like this image right here, you want to make sure that you have the right dimension for that one as well. Now, a big issue I see that a lot of people tend to do is that they have images which they use as icons on the website. Now, there's a big difference between icons and images themselves. Although if you are a beginner, this could actually seem like it's the actual same thing, but it's not the same thing. So what a lot of people tend to do is that they have an image like this one. Now, it doesn't really look like an icon, but let's pretend that this is an icon for us uh, for just a second here. And put let's, let's just put this icon here at the top here. Now, you might think, okay, this is perfect. It's a small image. It's not gonna have a huge impact on the website overall. But as we already saw when we cropped this or cropped this image down is that this image here, even though it looks small on the website, is actually a big image file. So this is still gonna be just as heavy, although it looks smaller on the website. So keep that in mind. When you have these big images and you try to scale them down on the website, they will be just as big as when you uploaded them. So it's not gonna matter if you scale them down like I just did. It will still be the exact same file size. So it will still have the exact same impact on your website overall. So if you actually or truly want to make this image smaller, you have to actually upload it originally in smaller dimensions. And the issue I also see is that if you use this as an icon, for example, we already know this is a big file. But ideally what you want to use here instead is an SVG file. So what you go and add instead is go into the add uh, options here on the side. Then you go over to decorative and then you can see that we have some basic um, 
So ba some basic icons that we can actually use on the website. We have some icons here as well. And here you can actually add these. These are gonna be a lot better for your website performance because SVG files are a lot smaller than PNGs or JPEGs that some people tend to add on their websites. You can also upload your own SVG files here and you can actually convert your PNG files to SVG. Although when you do convert some PNG files to SVGs, they actually do have some issues when you actually do the conversion itself. So you might actually run into some issues here uh, but just keep that in mind that you want to make sure they use SVGs when you implement icons on your website. Now moving on, we have another issue on Wix as well. Now keep in mind we are a bit limited in terms of what we can do for website performance on Wix. But another thing we want to make sure we look into is animations. So on Wix there is the option to add animation to pretty much everything that you have on your website. And a lot of people tend to think that animation look animations look good and they do look good, I do agree. but. If you tend to overdo it, if you add animations to everything that you see on the website and everything is just flying in from left to right, we can see that this text at the top actually has an animation. But if we were to make everything on a specific page fly in or spin in or turn in or fold in, that just adds extra bit of code to the website or to the page, which makes the page load slower. So you want to make sure that when you are using animations on your website that you actually have animations where it's relevant and you're not overdoing it either. Now from a user experience this is also important because if everything is just flying around it's not going to make any sense from a user experience either. Uh, it would just have a negative impact on your user experience and it will also have a negative impact on your website performance as well. So keep that in mind when you design your Wix websites that you try to use as few animations as possible. Ideally, you would use zero animations at all. Although animations can be important from a design perspective because it actually does make the website feel a bit more alive when things are actually moving around on the website itself. Now moving down with images. As I said, images are really large files and images are often gonna be the biggest files that you have on a website. So you wanna make sure that all the images you actually have on your website is relevant and does play a role in the website itself. If you're just adding in images just because you can and just because you feel like it looks cool and it doesn't really add any value to users, it's just gonna bloat the page and just add those extra files which is just gonna drag down the performance of the website. So make sure that once you're adding images, they actually have a key feature and they actually are important for the context of that specific page. Let's say you have a product page, obviously you need images to showcase the product itself. But on here, for example, we can see that we have one image here, one image here, and I believe one more image here. And then we don't really have any other images. And I think that's totally fine. In some examples, you can see people that actually have like a hundred different images on their homepage, which is obviously gonna have a huge negative impact on your website performance. Now, if you are a photographer, for example, I do understand that you need images on your website. So in that case, it will still be important because that is the intent that your customers want to see your images. There's gonna be a different perspective here. Now you can obviously try to optimize those images as best as you can, but in those scenarios, you still are gonna have a pretty bad website performance overall, especially in terms of Wix, because you can't really optimize the images that much, but you can do the best that you can in terms of the images and try to limit them as much as possible. Perhaps just showcase the best images that you have. You don't have to showcase everything on the website. You can just ask people to, for example, contact you for additional images and additional work that you actually done. Cool, with that being said, let's just jump over to the apps. So. If you've been using Wix for a while, you do know that you can add apps and different features to your website, which is all great because you can add new cool functionalities to the website overall. Now, something you have to keep in mind here is that for each individual element or plugin that you add to your website, it will add additional code to the website as well. So the more plugins that you have, the more bloated the website will be, and the more bloated it is, the slower it will be, and the longer it will take for users to load the website itself. So once you're adding plugins, make sure you only add plugins that you actually use and that actually adds benefits to your website because otherwise you will just run around with a bunch of plugins that are just slowing down your website. So make sure you're looking through this and actually only add the ones that you need. Now, if you've added plugins in the past and perhaps you're not using those plugins anymore, make sure you're jumping through and deleting the plugins that you're not using just to clear up some of that space on your website as well. Now, moving on and talking about videos, videos are also gonna be huge files that have a negative impact on your website performance, but they can also be beneficial for users to showcase a specific product or showcase a feature because videos are very interactive and they can be very positive for your website. 
So I'm not saying that you shouldn't have any videos on your website, although there are some tricks here that you can actually use in order to speed up your website and still have videos on your website as well. So if we go into videos here real quick, I can show you an example. So going into videos, you can either upload a video directly to Wix and have Wix host the video directly on the website. Now, if you use this alternative, it will be a lot slower in comparison of using YouTube, Vimeo, Facebook, or Daily Motion. So if you instead upload your video to YouTube and then add the or add a YouTube video, so embed the video on the page itself, that will actually be a lot faster in comparison to loading the video from the website itself. So if you're gonna add videos to your website, I would recommend that you actually embed them from these different services such as YouTube. Obviously, if you ask me, YouTube is gonna be the best way to go because if you're uploading your videos to YouTube, your potential customers can not only find your videos on your website, but they can also find your videos on YouTube directly, which broadens your reach and also broadens your SEO because these YouTube videos will help you grow your business, help you grow your company through YouTube as well, and not only through the website itself. Once you've made all of these changes that we talked through so far, you also wanna make sure that you head over to your mobile version. Google actually determines your website performance based on your mobile performance. So it's gonna be extra important that your website performs well on mobile. So on mobile, you can do this exact same things that we walked through on desktop. Here, you wanna make sure that you're limiting these big image files, limiting as many videos as possible and removing a lot of the plugins that you're not using. Some things you can do is for example, is for example, hiding specific images. So if this image doesn't add a lot of value on our mobile version, we can actually go ahead and hide this element right here. And that would free up some of that space on mobile as well. Now with all this being said, uh, we're actually gonna start analyzing our website to actually determine what we could do to improve our website based on the performance that we currently have on our website. And in order to understand how well our website is performing at the moment, what we have to do is go ahead and copy our URL that we want to analyze. So let's take this URL, for example. Then we go over to Google PageSpeed Insights. I will leave a link to this website in the video description. This is a free tool from Google that you can use and it's gonna be really simple as well. So what you do is that you just paste in your URL right here and then you click on analyze and you will get your results. So if we go ahead and click on analyze right now, we will start loading up the page speed or our performance, website performance for our mobile version. It will take a few seconds and once it's done loading, we'll actually see our results for this specific page. Okay, once that is done loading, we see the results right here. We have a website performance score of 25. Then you will see the measured values or metrics that Google actually takes a look at, which is the first contentful paint, speed index, largest contentful paint, time to interactive, total blocking time, and cumulative layout shift. Now, the only thing that we actually are performing well in here is cumulative layout shift. Cumulative layout shift is how your page jumps up and down. So when you're loading the page itself, is it jumping up or down? I think I will show an example here on the, on the screen. I think it's easier to show an example of this uh, because it's a bit hard to explain, but I'm sure you've uh, actually experienced this yourself once you've been on the website or not. And this is actually more from a user experience perspective and less from a website performance perspective. So once we're looking at the score right here, we have to take into account that Google is not only looking at website performance, they're also taking into account the user experience. So they wanna make sure that your website is loading fast and the users are actually satisfied with the website that they're visiting. Now, if we keep scrolling down right here, we can actually get some additional insights on things that we can improve based on Google's recommendations. We have reduced server response time as the number one. I do believe that our server response time is very low because we're using the free version of Wix. Now, if you do get the premium plan, I believe that this will be improved. I'm not 100% sure here, but I do believe that if you're using the free website, Wix will just give you a worse server. So the website performance speed would just be lower naturally. But if you're watching this video, you probably have a premium plan. So you don't have to really worry about this right here. Now, moving down, we have reduced unused JavaScript. So this will be various plugins and code that we have on the website itself, which is just adding a bunch of bloated code to the page. Now, as you can see here, we have a couple of different things in here, expand widget chunk. I believe this is correlating to the chat feature. Yes, that is the chat widget that we have on the website. So if you go back, we have the chat widget right here. Uh, so that is actually bloating the page quite a lot. We have this one as well, which is Wix restaurants. Uh, 
so some pay, some plugin on here that we have that's correlating to Wix restaurants. I'm not entirely sure which one that is, but that is also bloating the page itself. Again, we have the chat widget, which is also bloating the page. So just looking at these first three things, we can say that a lot of these are correlating to plugins that we have added to the website, which is actually dragging down the website performance. Now, if you do need these plugins, which are highlighted in your results, then you can't really do anything about it because if these plugins are essential for your business, you can't really do anything about it because you can't go in and change the live chat feature, for example, because this is something that VIX has to improve and you can't improve it. But if it is something that you're not using, let's say I'm not really using this live chat feature, it doesn't really make sense to me to have a live chat feature for a coffee shop either way. So then I can just go ahead and remove the live chat feature and definitely make some drastic improvements on our website performance. Now moving down, once again, we have some additional things. Use images of correct size. And this is, as I mentioned previously, is that we wanna make sure that we are using the right dimensions for our images on the website itself. So this is gonna be an easy fix that we can actually do. As you can see here, we have a couple of different images. We just wanna make sure that we're using the right dimensions for these images. Minify JavaScript, remove duplicate modules in JavaScript packages, remove resources that are block, uh, they're blocking rendering, postpone the loading of images that are not displayed on the screen, reduce unused CSS, and so much more. So by just using this tool right here, you can actually narrow down what is actually having a negative impact on your website performance go through the list one by one, then redo the results right here. So what you do is make the implementations, fix the issues, analyze again, and then you can see the progress that you make. And then you will see some additional things that you can improve. And then you just work your way down and eventually your website will be performing a lot better. Now worth mentioning here before we finish off the video is that on PC or desktop, your performance will always be higher. And that is just because desktop is always going to be quicker in comparison to a phone. And that is because your connect Wi-Fi connection is going to be a lot better. Your performance of the desktop is going to be a lot better as well. So keep that in mind. Your performance on desktop is always going to be better, but Google is prioritizing your mobile performance. So make sure that you're improving your mobile performance and you will see some positive results in terms of your organic rankings. That is going to be for today's video. Thank you all for watching. If you did enjoy it, please make sure to leave a like down below. If you have any questions, leave them in the comments or join our Discord channel, which is free to join as well. And if you want more content like this one, make sure you are subscribed to the channel as well. Thanks again for watching and I'll see you guys in the very next video.